What is going on guys, it's your boy Edward V and today we're gonna do five more things you should never do when intermittent fasting. I spoke about five things that you should never do when intermittent fasting, but there are still things that people shouldn't do that can be detrimental to the process and also can be holding you back from reaching your goals. And without any further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay tuned. All right, guys, before I start, this video is sponsored by yours truly, Fledge Fitness and the Fledge Fitness Jump Rope. If you haven't gotten yours yet, it's only $16.50 with an ergonomic design, a swivel design for maximum speed. You cannot go wrong when you purchase the Fledge Fitness Jump Rope. If you guys have been around watching my videos for some time, you know that these jump ropes always, always sell out. So you wanna get your hands on them as quickly as possible and the link will be down in the description below. Now let's go ahead and jump straight into the video. The first thing that you should never do when intermittent fasting is substituting fasting days or fasting protocols with juice fasting. Now, this is the issue and the problem with the intermittent fasting umbrella or the fasting umbrella. It encompasses so many different things, so many different variations. It's actually a term that can be used even for omitting something. So although you aren't truly fasting, you're not in a fasted state, you're fasting when you're doing a juice fast because it's a juice fast. And I guess fast is just representative of the fact that you're not eating anything else except drinking this juice. But that can be misleading and that's something that I actually have lot of issues with because people use these different variations to belittle the actual intermittent fasting protocol because all of these things are under that intermittent fasting or fasting umbrella but I digress now let's go ahead and talk about why you should not substitute juice fasting for normal fasting now I've had so many people tell me hey look on three days out of the week I do juice fasting and then the rest of them I do the intermittent fasting thing and it, I think it works for me that's fine that's great and if it works for you if you're losing weight and if you're hitting your goals that's fine the only thing that I would suggest is that you understand exactly what is happening because juice fasting is still consuming calories. Calories, glucose, especially glucose, I mean, that's what's coming from a juice fast. When you're squeezing oranges and squeezing apples, it comes with fructose, that's where the calories are coming from. And glucose is used very, very easily and very quickly within the body for energy, for the body, for the liver, for the heart, all these different organs that require this energy. So if you're consuming anything, especially juice fasting, it's still consumption and it's glucose especially, you're still not getting yourself into what is called a post-absorptive range that takes a a certain amount of time to get into and once you're in there your body's actually secreting beta hydroxybutyrate ketones are being used to energize your body for your brain and body fat is being used to do this transition plus the hormonal shifts that are happening when you get into this post absorptive range and juice fasting unfortunately will not let you do that it will actually hold you back from that because it's going to give you a false sense that you are actually fasting if you just take that title on face value you are not fasting you are consuming calories you're just consuming specific calories that come from juice fasting that's all but it is still going to be used by your body it is still going to be somewhat empty because there's nothing else with it there's no other macronutrients that are coming with it to be more nutritionally balanced so please do not utilize juice fasting as a substitute for fasting if you want to do juice fasting because that's what you want to do that's one thing there are things that i disagree with when it comes to juice fasting in terms of its lack of nutrition and just consuming fructose on a consistent basis like that without anything else. I have my disagreements with that, but in terms of if you're in a fasted state, if you're actually consistently fasting when doing that, you are not. So even if you like it or not, I just want you to understand that concept. Now let's go ahead and move on to number two, doing fasting under 16 hours. Now there are a lot of people that utilize intermittent fasting, but don't utilize a 16 hour plus fasting time frame. What does that mean? For example, their 12 hours of fasting versus 12 hours of eating is a very popular concept. Eating 12 hours, fasting for 12 hours. However, it may not be beneficial. And the explanation for this is very simple. The post-absorptive range takes about eight to 12 hours to get into that range. Now, it all depends on how quickly it will take you specifically to get in this post-absorptive range, but it's roughly around eight to 12 hours, all depending on if how fat adapted you are or how quickly your body in and of itself can just go into this 
post-absorptive range. When you deplete all of the glucose, deplete all of the outside energy that is still uh, lingering, and then you're using body fat as energy. Now, even if you have the best case scenario, even if it's eight hours to get into this post-absorptive range, you only have four hours within this post-absorptive range, which means you're only burning body fat, specifically targeting body fat aggressively for four hours, doing that hormonal shift where the IGF-1 is increased, where muscle tissue is retained, where all these different things are happening, where you're increasing leptin, decreasing ghrelin, reducing your insulin to baseline. All of these things are happening simply for four hours. That's not much and it's very incremental, especially over time, it's gonna take longer for you to reap the benefits that someone who's doing 16 hours is getting. So what you wanna do is at least 16 hours. Now, if you wanna use 12 hours of fasting as a stepping stone to get into fasting within a few days so that you can start a 16 hour fasting protocol or a 20 hour fasting protocol per day where you're eating for four hours, fasting for 20, eating for eight hours, fasting for 16. If you wanna do that, great, you can go ahead and do that, but don't make it the catalyst of your fasting protocol. Don't make it the thing that you are going to follow because it's not very beneficial to begin with. The only thing it can really do is maybe help you control your calories and it can't even do that very well because 12 hours of eating throughout the entire day is still a long time. Remember, you're sleeping for eight hours. So you're basically only fasting for roughly four awake hours. That's not very difficult to do and most people do that every day by accident. Now let's go ahead and move on to number three taking more than a two day break from intermittent fasting. Why is this detrimental? Well, think back to any time you actually stopped doing the intermittent fasting protocol. Have you ever stopped doing it and some time has passed and you thought back to yourself, well, why did I stop? I was doing so well with intermittent fasting, but for some reason I just completely stopped doing it. If you think back to why you stopped doing it, it is probably because of multiple days that you broke away from the protocol. Once you break away from the protocol, even for one day, your body starts to be clued in that you are not following this regimen and it starts to secrete ghrelin and specific points during the day to try to get you to eat more. Your body wants to hold on to the calories that it stores because even if it holds on to too much calories and you're morbidly obese, your body still feels that this is a beneficial emergency reserve and doesn't want to utilize it. So if you do one day, your body starts to get into that flow. If you do another day, your body's definitely in a very aggressive flow. If you do a third day, you have completely completely started this snowball effect that's going to be hard to pull back from. Your body is now going to reduce leptin. It's going to increase ghrelin. So you're going to feel hungrier. You're going to feel less full when leptin is reduced. So you're going to eat more. It's going to make you want to eat more simply because it's trying to get you back into the protocol or regimen you were in before you started doing intermittent fasting. Yes, it got used to intermittent fasting because you forced it to get used to intermittent fasting. You were doing it day in and day out. You created a new body biological rhythm for you, ghrelin and leptin started to regulate, everything started to, to balance, and then your body accepted the intermittent fasting protocol. But once you give it a hint that, hey, you might be stepping away from it, your body gonna try to go full force to put you in that direction. So I understand that life happens. This is a thing, I, I get that, I, I completely get that. So if you're going to break your fast, if you're going to break your protocol of fasting, then don't do more than two days, only two days. Anything other than that is incredibly detrimental for you psychologically and hormonally and the next thing you know you're gonna be back to the way you were before so please keep that in mind if you're on a roll try to keep it that way no more than two days breaking the fasting protocol and now let's move on to number four only eating later in the day rather than earlier in the day now this is not to say that eating later in the day is what you shouldn't do and eating earlier in the day is what you should you shouldn't limit yourself to think that you can only eat later in the day now Breakfast skipping is a big thing with amongst the intermittent fasting community. Morning breakfast skipping, just to keep it uh, very clear, because I understand that breakfast means breaking a fast, and that could happen at any moment. I get that. But morning breakfast skipping is incredibly popular within the intermittent fasting community because breakfast just symbolizes eating right away once you wake up and going within the normal eating regimen of the American society where you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But you can eat in the morning and not eat at night. You can decide that you're fasting 
processing time frame will be later in the day and your eating time frame will be earlier in the day if it's something that you feel much better doing if you feel better eating when you wake up or eating in the morning during that time before you go to work then go ahead and do that do not limit yourself be as versatile and nimble within the protocol itself as much as you can because this way one you'll be doing something that is actually easier for you and two because it's easier for you you'll be able to sustain the lifestyle which is the most important thing sustainability sustainability is even more important than the intermittent fasting protocol itself because if you can't do it for the long term then it's just not going to work because you're going to go back to what you were before or how you felt before because you're going to fall off of the regimen and to give you even more of a peace of mind if you want to eat in the morning there are studies that show that eating in the morning actually can be beneficial for you in terms of body fat loss and even health improvements so if you want to eat in the morning and not at night go ahead but if you want to eat at night and not in the morning you can still do that too basically just don't limit yourself and let's go ahead and touch on number five avoiding exercise some people actually use intermittent fasting as the thing that lets them not do exercise like okay i used to do exercise but now i do intermittent fasting that's not how it works you want to compound as many health elements as you can you want to retain muscle and build muscle but you're not going to retain or build muscle even if you're doing intermittent fasting if you're not actually stimulating muscle growth or muscle attention and how do you stimulate that by going to the gym and working out by creating hypertrophy by increasing weights using compound movements like the bench press or the deadlift or the pull-ups those kind of things that target multiple muscle groups things that help you grow muscle and things that help you hold on to muscle you have to work on those things because if you don't then what ends up happening is your body still will utilize muscle for energy when you're doing intermittent fasting because it doesn't feel that it needs it you're not stimulating your body to actually use it thus it will feel that it's an unnecessary thing that has energy in it so it can use that your body is very smart and at one point if it notices that you aren't using these elements it will use it itself for something else so don't put yourself in that predicament please you still need to go to the gym and then actually going to the gym building muscle retaining muscle working on your body also complements intermittent fasting because intermittent fasting does things to help you retain muscle so why not use those benefits to your advantage also don't think that this omits you from doing cardio because cardio increases your cardiovascular health the health within your heart having your heart beat effectively that's very very healthy for you so you still want to implement things like cardio and you still want to implement things like resistance training use that coupled with intermittent fasting so you could be the most optimal version of yourself when it comes to health and nutrition and that is it guys i hope this video has helped you and of course i want to thank my patrons from my patreon and i'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here And of course, as always, guys, I'll see you on Sunday for another FAQ. Peace!